In the summer of 1940, Roosevelt sends Donovan to England, basically just to answer a very simple question. Can Britain survive this war, or is it going to be occupied by Nazi Germany? And this was a question that Roosevelt didn't really have a clear answer to. He didn't really have a good read on uh, Winston Churchill either. Uh, later on, they would become very, very close. But at that point, he didn't know who this prime minister really was. And we continue with Our American Stories. While Bill Donovan was one of America's most exciting and secretive generals, the man President Franklin Delano Roosevelt made his top spy in World War II. While Bill was the director of the Office of Strategic Services, the country's first national intelligence agency, he is known as the founding father of both the CIA and the military special operations forces along with being credited as the father of psychological and cyber warfare. Here to tell the story is Douglas Waller. He's the author of the bestseller, Wild Bill Donovan, the spymaster who created the OSS and modern American espionage. Let's take a listen. Wild Bill Donovan. He slept five hours or less a night, speed read about three books a week, he was an excellent ballroom dancer. He loved to sing Irish songs. In fact, he'd go to Broadway and buy up the latest sheet music so he could memorize the words. He didn't smoke, rarely drank, enjoyed fine dining, although it tended to add to the weight. He spent lavishly, had no concept for a dollar. In fact, when he was roaming the world, visiting his different OSS stations, he was always bumming dollars and quarters off his, the aides who were with him because he never kept any money with him. He was witty, but he never laughed out loud. He never told a dirty joke. He never showed anger. Instead, he let it boil inside of him. He was also rakishly handsome. He had these bright blue eyes that women found absolutely captivating. His life also was filled with a lot of personal tragedy. His daughter died in an automobile accident in college. His daughter-in-law died of a drug overdose. One of his granddaughters, when she was four years old, died when she accidentally swallowed silver polish. He had a lot of sadness in his life. He was born on New Year's Day, 1883, in Buffalo, New York's poor Irish first ward. He thought he might uh, wanted to become a priest. In every Irish Catholic family, it was always assumed that one of the sons would become a priest, and Donovan thought that was going to be him. Realized later on that he wasn't cut out to be a man of the cloth, he went to Columbia University, was a star quarterback on the football team his senior year until he got hobbled by a cheap tackle by a Princeton lineman. He then went to Columbia Law School. Franklin Roosevelt also attended the law school at that time. In fact, Roosevelt later liked to say that he and Donovan were old buddies in law school. And Donovan said, oh, that's a bunch of baloney. Roosevelt was on a much higher social strata than a poor kid from Buffalo. He returned to Buffalo after law school set up a law practice, married one of the richest women in town. World War I, he led a battalion for the, with the 69th Irish Regiment, a very famous regiment. In fact, they did a movie on it. Jimmy Cagney played in it. Donovan was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for heroism in battle during World War I. The chaplain of the 69th Irish Re Regiment, a guy named Father Francis Duffy, said Donovan was the only man he had ever met in his life who actually enjoyed combat. He really did. He would write home to his wife, Ruth, that going out on combat missions was like going out trick-or-treating at night. Also during World War I is when he got his nickname, Wild Bill. He was a very rigorous, almost a brutal trainer of his men because he realized they were going to be going into a meat grinder of combat in World War I, which they did. So before they actually went into action in France, he had them running over hill and dale and over obstacle courses under barbed wire and, and everything. Finally, they all, the entire battalion collapsed in front of him. And he stood up there all jaunty and said, well, you know, what the heck's the matter with you? I'm 35 years old carrying the same pack that you are. You don't see me out of breath. 
From somewhere in the back, uh, a soldier shouted out, he never figured out who, but we're not as wild as you are, Bill. From that day on, Wild Bill Donovan stuck. He claimed he didn't like that nickname because it ran counter to the cool, calm, quiet spy image he wanted to project. But his wife, Ruth, said that he really did like to be called Wild Bill. He returned to New York, a hero. He became an assistant to the Attorney General in the Coolidge administration during the Roaring Twenties. His goal at that point was to become Attorney General of the United States. And he thought Herbert Hoover, who succeeded Calvin Coolidge, had promised him that position. And in fact, Hoover had uh, promised him the attorney generalship. But this is the late 1920s. The Ku Klux Klan is a very powerful political movement in this country. And it was up in arms over the idea of a Roman Catholic becoming attorney general of the United States. Donovan, as any prominent figure in Washington, also made his share of enemies there. He was a prominent Republican. Senate Democrats vowed to block his nomination. Hoover reneged on the promise. Until the day he died, Donovan never forgave Herbert Hoover for denying him the attorney generalship. In 1932, he decided to dip his toe into politics once more. He ran for governor of New York. His idea then was to become the first Irish Catholic president of the United States and the governorship of New York was an ideal stepping stone for the presidency. In many respects, it may still be today. Keep in mind, 1932, Franklin Roosevelt was running for his first term in office, and he had been governor of New York. Donovan ran against a guy named Herbert Lehman, who was Roosevelt's lieutenant governor. He ended up running as much against Roosevelt as he did against Lehman. Said some pretty nasty things about FDR on the campaign trail. At one point, he accused Roosevelt of being, quote, crafty. Another time he accused Roosevelt of being a Hyde Park faker because Roosevelt claimed he was a simple farmer from Hyde Park and Donovan said that was a bunch of baloney. Roosevelt, for his part, sent out surrogates on the campaign trail to take their shots at Donovan. In fact, Eleanor hit the trail and went after Donovan on different issues. Now, the reason I give you some of this backstory is it's amazing then that Franklin Roosevelt made Donovan his top spy master, a very senior position, considering all the nasty things these two guys had said about each other in New York politics. Fast forward to 1940, going in 1940.